Welcome back to Crazy Dave's Crew. I'm Laura, and you're watching Thursday Threads. So, a week or so ago, uh, I showed y'all how I, my little spontaneous spur of the moment uh, experiment of using the scrappy string quilt block and kind of changing the size around. I did some large squares, some rectangles, and I put them together and made a, made a blanket. I had a number of people ask, um, okay, great, now what? What does the back look like? How are you going to finish it? Uh, first of all, um, you can finish it any way you want to. This would be your project. So I am going to show you how I'm finishing it. Not necessarily the right way. It's not the wrong way. It's just my way. Uh, I also had some people ask about the pattern, which, guys, thank you so much. That just really, I needed that, the encouragement for that, that you're wanting to make copy my pattern this is this is nice I like this so I will try to uh, make sure there's some pictures uh, and I just I just put it together I made it to where it was equal to eight of the five and a half inch squares across um, my rectangles are each worth one and a half of the squares obviously the squares are each worth one and then my large square is worth two so I uh, you know just came across a value of eight um, but we will try to make sure there are some nice pictures up here. And maybe, if I can get to it, maybe we'll do an article for cdcrew.com and try to have some pictures in there. That way you can look at that and uh, copy if you so desire. But let's take a look at how I'm going to finish it. But uh, if you have a different method, I would love to hear about it. love to see pictures. So don't forget to find us on Facebook, Sewing and Crocheting for Beginners. Also on Facebook, Crazy Dave's Crew. So I said, we love pictures. I'd love to know how you would finish it. Um, and because we're in Tennessee and Chattanooga, and so we're, we've got the mountains, you know, all around us, um, it doesn't it doesn't get real cold. So I'm probably not going to make this a real heavy one. I've got my strings on the front. I do have a piece of muslin on the back. And with using the one-inch sashing, my squares are just butting up next to each other really nicely. But obviously, I do want to back on this. But there is my back of how it looks right now. Now I'm going to go get the piece of fabric I've selected for my backing, and we'll take it from there. Right, so like I said, it doesn't get terribly cold here in Chattanooga. And uh, my thermostat tends to run a little hot anyway. So I am just going to uh, put a piece of fleece on the back. Again, I just want to make sure you all understand this is not the right way or the wrong way. This is just my way. Um, and what you do, of course, is a lot of personal preference. I found this really pretty piece of fleece. And it's a little thin. So I said sometimes I just want something that will... You know, just kind of cover me up a little bit when I'm wanting to take an afternoon rest. So I am just going to measure this out and cut to just a little bit bigger than my top. And I do that because I would just rather have too much and to cut it off than to have too little and you know not be right. So I I, I always err on the size of, on the side of uh, being a little bit too big you can always cut more off but you can't always add more on so I will press all this down to get all the wrinkles out and then I will uh, measure and cut to be just a little bit bigger than my top see you back here in a minute so for attaching my fleece back to my top I'm going to use a walking foot I have inserted a pretty rose, pink rose color for my bobbin, and I'm using a gray for my top stitch. I've set my stitch to be a zigzag at 2.5 on the length and 2.5 on the width, so it's just a little zigzag. And because I'm not using batting, um, I don't have to stitch every, you know, four to six so. inches. You can see where all I've done, I've got a stitch going across there, here, 
another stitch, another stitch. Okay, so because there's no batting, I didn't have to go every four to five inches. So I've got a dark gray binding. I'm going to do about a half inch seam, and I'm just going to use a straight stitch for attaching this to my little sandwich. Do all four sides, and then we will kind of fold them over and make our binding. So here we go. So I've put my border on every side, sewn it together. Now I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to press it down. And then I'm going to pin it. Now I've also found the um, there are some binder clips that you can get from the office supply store. Those work really well. You can also find some little clips from, um, you know, at the quilt shops. Uh, there's a package I see all the time at Dollar Tree of some uh, different colored little clippies. Um, those work really well. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to do this on each side. And then we'll be finished. And ladies, guys, viewers, I just want y'all to know I have made some errors in this. More than I would like to admit to, but they're there. So please, don't let yourself get discouraged. I mean, how many of us could do calculus, the, you know, when we were in fourth grade? Uh, there, there's some that can, you know, but um, for the most of us, you know, we had to work through basic math and then into high school and algebra and all the, the different things. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I, I can't pick up a book and read Old English. Uh, I would need to have a couple classes in that and a lot of practice. And I think the same thing goes with this. You need to give your, forgive yourself for some errors. Um, and I've made them. Hate it. Don't like it. But I'm not crying over it. I want to keep on going. I think I'm doing better this time around than I have the last time. So I'm going to do this to the other side. And then I'm going to put it on the machine. And I think what I'm going to do is take a little zigzag stitch and just zigzag it right at the edge of my little uh, homemade binding here. So I have changed my bobbin to gray. I have a gray in the top needle, I have gray in the bobbin, and I am ready to go. So be back in just a minute. So I'm using my walking foot again because I don't want any of my layers to slip. There is a little red line on my walking foot right there so I am using that as my guide for the little fold and I'm just doing a little zigzag just a little zigzag all the way along I just need to cut off some of my little strings, but I just did a simple fold over for my binding. I have my fleece on my back. It is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I am fully aware of all my flaws, but I'm still very pleased with it. I'm very happy, and I want to thank you. Yes, you. Um, I probably would have stopped with just making the top but you guys made the comments and made questions and really actually inspired me to continue and to finish it so I want to thank you guys for that um, 
I think I learn as much, if not more, than y'all do with these videos. Uh, we're all in this together. We're all wanting to learn. We're all practicing. So I hope that you have enjoyed this little series uh, as much as I have enjoyed making my little finished product. And I hope that you will come back to Crazy Dave's crew. Please don't forget to subscribe, to like, make comments. Find us on Facebook under Sewing and Crocheting for Beginners and also under Crazy Dave's Crew. Would love to see pictures. So those of you who asked for the pattern, um, I, do I did make some pictures and I'm going to talk to my husband to try to put those up uh, with this video. Uh, and I'll see if I can't get some pictures posted on cdcrew.com. And uh, if you uh, if you make one, please send us pictures. I'd love to see what you do. I think this would be real pretty in a yellow and blue. Also, maybe a blue and gray. Um, there's so many different color combinations you could do. So I would love to see what you come up with. But there we go. Very light, comfy little cuddle quilt with just a basic binding and it was a, a lot of fun to do. Well, we will see you next time right here on Crazy Dave's Crew and Thirsty Threads. Thanks so much.